Hey guys, welcome to Garage Geeks. My name is Cody Groom. Today we're at Fresh Auto Haas with Eric here. Eric, tell me a little bit about what you guys do here. Uh, automotive vinyl wrapping here. Uh, we do full, uh, full car wraps, three quarters wraps, library as well. We do in-house design along with our clients. Um, on the other side of the shop, we do some um, exterior detailing. Don't forget the barber shop over there in the oh, corner. Oh, hey, you know what? In, right in front of us actually is our barber shop. We have a one chair barber shop with one of the best barbers in San Diego. Tell, tell me a little bit about your background. Where, what is your background? Because you are mentioning you were in the army before. I am currently in the army reserves as a captain and um, I used to be a contractor for a government agency. Pretty crazy so, to go from yeah. that to wrapping so, cars yes. or, or decals or whatever it may be. But Which it's, is kind of crazy because it goes back down to when I was age 13. Yeah. When I, the love for cars, you know, my little toy car. So of it's course. like you get in two yeah. degrees and all of a sudden it's like. Dude, as you get older, it, it's just that <laughs> all that happens is the toys get bigger, more expensive, yes. and you see your bank account a little bit more. Yes, absolutely, Cody. Uh, all right, man. Well, today we have a 2000, it's a 2006, right? 2006. We have a 2006 Z06 here. And uh, we're going to do a little, just a simple roof wrap. Um, Eric's going to walk us through that, show us how to do it, and hopefully that helps you guys wrap your own cars, or if you can't do it, you can always bring it down to Fresh Auto Haas and have them do it. But anyways, let's get to doing that. What's going on right now? Yeah, we're just taking away the uh, natural elements as such as dust, um, some insect uh, things that were left behind, um, and just kind of assessing the surface. Um, and then the next thing what we want to do is do a clay bar on, on the roof and the parts that you're going to be wrapping so that it leaves a really good, uh, nice smooth surface. First stage of wrap is the prep. You want to make sure that everything is clean, down to underneath the seals, and this includes everything, even wax. You want to remove all of it off the surface so that it, the adhesive sticks in the best way possible. Also, this is going to give you the best appearance afterwards. You don't want anything underneath the wrap that could potentially be popping up. You want to treat this like you were painting a car. You want the prep to be very thorough. So what kind of things are you looking for right here? Uh, I'm looking for, again, like, the, like I said earlier, the uh, natural elements, such as the dust, dirt, grime. And what this does is it picks up all those uh, surface contaminants from the uh, external environment that, uh, uh, that cannot be seen by the eye. And at the end, after you wipe it, what happens is you can feel that smooth surface, which uh, once we lay the vinyl down, not only adheres easily and a lot better, but uh, you'll see a smooth surface on, right above the vinyl once it's laid. All right, Eric, what's going on right now? All right, so what we're doing right now is uh, we laid the vinyl on top. We're gonna do a visual cut of how much vinyl we need. We did count it um, 37 inches by, you wanna go and take that side? By 60 inches, length and width. Uh, once we get this cut, we're gonna take this piece out, throw it up behind us, and then next step is to actually peel it off the backing, peel the backing off and then um, um, move from the lay, uh, move from there by stretching it, angling it. Um, here, I'll take it. What you don't want to do is have the top gloss part upside down or drop to the floor. Why? Because it will scratch. You got to treat it as if it were paint. So we're just cutting a little bit more. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the roof wrap uh, the roof in two pieces. Here you go, in separate pieces. And that's because you have the little back part that's a little different, right? That is correct. And also, I don't like wasting materials. So, I mean, we can turn around and use this material for mirror, door handles, trim work, or whatsoever. Okay, so we got this main piece directly underneath it. We're going to wrap this piece with this guy, with the main roof for this piece right here, which is a separate section of the vehicle. We're going to wrap it from here to here with a separate type of vinyl with the same amount of uh, measurements that we cut. So... 
Before we get into it, we're gonna do this bad boy first, this big piece, and then jump to the second one. During the wrap process, we're also gonna tuck it in so that we get the nice strain, uh, straight fitment on all the edges of the, uh, the roof. There you go. Ready, pull. Okay, get our measurements right. When laying out the vinyl, you wanna do what's called glassing. You wanna make sure that you're actually pulling the vinyl and stretching it so that when you lay it down, it's already glassed out for the most part, and then using the squeegee to then take out the bubble. So right now, uh, we just laid the, the vinyl, the gloss black vinyl, uh, right above the roof, and we glassed it. Um, right now we're just minimizing the amount of work that needs to get done by stretching it in a triangle for, uh, formation uh, from each corner. So what we're doing is reducing the wrinkles and then tacking it on each corner of the roof. Once Aaron um, finishes up cleaning up that bubble lo uh, locations, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start uh, squeegeeing it down, say. And then what we wanna do also is, what I use is alcohol and water. Uh, before I start squeegees to reduce the amount of scratches. Yes, you will see micro scratches from the, um, um, the squeegee itself, but it's self-healing technology, which makes the, the vinyl wrap um, awesome. So here we go. You good? All right. Here we go. So we start from the center of the vehicle to help push those air bubbles out. But at the same time, you gotta know what you're doing as far as angling your, um, your uh, squeegee in order to uh, push those air bubbles out, okay? So right now, Aaron and I are just going, trying to get the air bubbles over the hill, which is like I was talking about uh, the design of the, the roof. Once we get that, then we can move forward. Uh, one thing about this wrap, it's got air release technology, which helps the wrappers out there in the industry um, work around it, just like that. You don't want to force the bubbles down because you, you're going to end up pulling the whole entire, uh, well, not the entire, maybe just three quarters of the uh, in this part, Eric actually had a bubble underneath the vinyl and needed to actually lift up the vinyl to make sure that that bubble got out. In certain cases, you can actually push down the vinyl, but in this case, the best solution was to lift up the vinyl and get that bubble out. You don't want to stretch it. What you want to do is heat gun, apply a little heat temperature to it. Um, and release, pull again, release. So what we're trying to do is you're trying to get to that bubble area um, you don't want to force yourself. Even if it has air release technology, it, can, it may or may not work with you or work for you. Um, easiest way is to just pull it back out and squeeze that bubble back out. There you go. Okay, just hold that position. Okay, one more. Go ahead. You gotta be careful when you're pulling too. All right, here we go. We're gonna glass this one, okay? So in order to make this work, don't put it down yet, okay? To prevent that type of trouble, what you wanna do, again, is the magic glove. <laughs> Push the air out, okay, which helps. These are very convenient when it comes to wrapping. There you go, now you can push the rest out. Done. It's just, it's art, it's like a paint, you know? If you don't paint it right, it's not gonna come out looking perfect the way you want it to. And here at First Shadow House, we treat our cars as if it were my car, his car, our cars in general. So we gotta do it right. Um, but other than that, as you can see, the middle is nice and flat. It looks really good. Air bubbles are out. Now we work from here, the center, towards our chest area, and then continue to go from there.
On this edge right here, as you come towards um, the edge of the roof, you always want to make sure that you do not want to overstretch because if you overstretch, there's a difference between a heat gun heat versus the natural sunlight heat. If you bring this car on the, the sunlight heat and natural element out there in the environment, what's going to happen is it's going to pull your vinyl up and bubble up, most especially in those hard corners if you're doing vinyl, if you're wrapping the front bumper, um, side skirts toward the rear. So what I like to do is lift it up and just work with the vinyl by using this glove, depending on the type of surface features that we're dealing with. So I'll use this glove. Um, at the same time, not everybody covers, but you gotta make sure that your glove is not contaminated. You may have small rock chips on here. And what happens is if you're excited to wrap it, get it all done, but unfortunately you're starting to scratch it. So you wanna minimize as much scratches as possible. Again, you can't always count on the vinyl being self-healing technology, like they say. All right. Now that I got this part right here in this edge corner, you want to go in the lift and not strain the vinyl to its to a certain point, and then just go ahead and glass over it. But you also got to remember you do have that rubber um, weather stripping here. Okay. Notice I didn't start pushing it down. I'll lift here just to release the bubbles. It kind of helps shape, actually help shape the uh, the vinyl. So you want to work with the vinyl versus just trying to wrap it and call it a day. You got to understand the vinyl is. Um, capabilities when you're wrapping. Most importantly, it's thickness for heating purposes. And I'll use this guy. Just like this. Right, so right squeegee, get into there. So I'm not cutting this part by using this. Uh, squeegee, you don't want to do it, you're not cutting meat. All right, you just want to slightly put pressure onto it. The only reason why I do that is just to shape and tell me where the line for the weather strip is at. So I can start tucking in how much, um, how much what my measurements are as far as um, cutting it from here and then tucking behind the rubber, the weather strips. And then this one, make, yeah. There you go. Again, I'm going in, not pushing too hard because like I said earlier, this just helps shape the lines. So we can go in there with a nice old straight blade and all right, next thing we want to do, since we've got our lines ready to go, we know where our trim lines are at, our weather trim lines are at, and then um, got this nice little sharp blade. What I'm going to do is I start from the middle, and then right above the rubber, I leave, I leave at least a good three quarters of vinyl or less, uh, depending on how much gap you got. And as you notice, I'm not holding the blade up here and starting to cut this way. Why? Because you will scratch the car. Um, paint surface and or cut the, the weather strip by accident. So what I'm doing here is a pressure cut, which is called a pressure cut. Again, I don't just go straight into cutting it. I want to make sure that my pressure cut is perfect. Now with this middle finger, I have my middle finger in between the, the roof as well as the windshield. That's going to help guide me cut my, my line down the center. I can feel it. You go through. But you want to take your time when you're doing this, most especially when you're doing corners and edges for any type of vehicle. Okay. And on this point, I like to bring my cut out this way. Why? Just in case I end up short, I have enough room to actually pull on it. And that's the kind of cut you want right down the center. And you'll see what we'll do with this. What we're gonna do with this, actually tuck it in. It's okay if you didn't cut right or cut here because that tells yourself that you're being very, very cognizant of how much pressure you're putting on the, onto the car. Okay. Go ahead. So while he's cutting, take your time. Go down the middle. Yep. While he's cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. So it helps guide him and look at the rubber. He wants to hit the, the middle part of the rubber and not go towards the roof. There you go. Great job. There you go. And then cut. Just go cut towards the light. Perfect. You got to be careful too when you're cutting and you pull out. You could either cut yourself or cut the uh, other portions of the uh, vehicle itself. All right, I'll take that again. Now we're going to do the edge here. All right, like I said, I always pick it up, kind of see where I'm cutting, what I'm cutting, most importantly because you may not be 
just cutting over a rubber, but you're also cutting on top of paint surface. There you go. I got my signature line. I pull, 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 keep pulling. When I'm doing this, it's helping me guide my cut. Not only that, but visually ensuring that my cut's above the rubber and where I want it to cut, rather than just blindly doing it. Okay. See, this is what I mean. If you just cut through, you're going to cut that paint. You don't want the customer to catch that scratch. It does cost a lot of money, and I'm trying to repair that. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here, okay? So here we go. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, the vinyl is in between the roof as well as this portion that we're going to wrap here soon. Um, so what I'm going to do is the same thing I applied in front. I'm going to cut down the center right above the rubber with the pressure cut. And with this middle finger, I'm going to put my finger right here. This is going to help guide me in my cut. Since it's a thinner, thinner line, you want, to be, you want to take your time and be very careful. If you don't take your time, you rush it, you will cut. It's very very important that you know where you're cutting because you could be riding the surface of the vinyl and sometimes the vinyl is very slick it'll guide your your blade above the roof or whatever portions you're wrapping on the car just like that Okay. And it's okay if it stops like that, congratulate yourself because you're not cutting um, against the, cutting through the rubber. Another way to cut it is not only on the rubber, but you can ask, actually use this as your ruler, the other portion. That's yeah, going to help guide you. So Aaron's taking his time. I want him to take his time. You need a lot of patience when you're wrapping. Okay, so now we've come to concluding on cutting the, shaping our, our edges or corners. In our lines, what I like to do is also go ahead and prepare myself because what we're going to do is tuck this extra excess behind. You got the blade? Yeah, behind the um, the weather strip, which is a. Uh, so I got a pick here. Actually, I'm going to start up here. So I'm just going to use my finger for now. Tuck that in. You don't want to push too hard, most especially with the hard uh, ended uh, plastic ended uh, squeegee. You can change up your squeegee depending how far you're going down. So I just want to take my time with this one. Most especially, you got to be cognizant of the, uh, the pick because it will slide and escape from your finger or the surface when you're tucking in. And you know what happens next. So I'm going to angle it this way and start my tucking in. All right, now that I got that portion started, There you go. Yeah, this is the, the harder part. There you go. Yeah. Let's make this a lot easier. I'll pull this guy off and just tuck in. You don't want to force the vinyl in there. You force the vinyl in there, one, it'll get cut by the squeegee because of the amount of pressure. Yes, you're tucking in, but you don't want to tuck in too hard. You can definitely cut with these tools in your hand. You can definitely cut the vinyl. And you're going to end up starting all over, replacing the entire vinyl surface. Some vinyl, uh, some weather strips are easy to pull back. Uh, surprisingly, this 2006 Corvette here um, is working out. And most of the time, the uh, weather strips are old because they're damaged by the sun's, uh, the sun's heat or the outside elements per se. And they tend to break with that. We'll just cut directly right on top. But very, very careful. As you notice, here's a clean tuck-in. Okay. But as soon as you're done with that, you want to re-inspect it at least twice because you got to remember once I put this car, once the customer drives out of here, with this vehicle, the sun's gonna hit it, so it'll, it'll draw, the sun's heat will draw the vinyl back. Okay, so you can see the technique that Eric's using here. He's using the actual pick to pull up the seal, but then use the squeegee to actually tuck it behind. 
Yeah, it's about an inch or inch and a half per tuck, but it's fine. At least you're not only working with the vinyl, but you're doing it right. There you go. Now with this squeegee, you gotta remember, it will scratch the vinyl. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing is, I'm staying as close as possible to the weather strip and getting it in there. I said, you just gotta pretend that this does not have any self-healing technology. All right, treat it as if it were, uh, as if it did not have. And the game is, the ball's in your court. Okay. What you know about this? This is a cell phone squeegee right here. Don't forget about that, rap team. <laughs> cell phone squeegee. Works well. Okay, that's it. Nice and clean, Reinspect it. And I'm gonna go from here to there. But what I want to do is start from here and then go to the front, then go towards that side and assist Aaron in um, the, uh, the tucking in. Um, tucking here in the back with the weather strip, it's a lot easier. I didn't have to use this guy right here, um, your pick. Why? Because the weather trim does this number. It's shaped like that, and then the roof drops in, down. So all I'm doing is just tucking in right here with this little pink squeegee right here, just fitting that in between the, the crack and just tucking in. Okay. Again, you got to be cognizant that you're, what you're doing here. It may look easy and fun, but the thing is, again, it's a hard plastic surface. Um, it will cut, scratch, and, and possibly create a hole in your vinyl. Okay. That's it. You got a nice clean one. What I like to do is heat it up. Some people don't do it, but the heat activates the adhesive behind the vinyl and actually gets it in there, Most especially when you put pressure down. Uh, when you put pressure onto the vinyl, just like that. Okay. Because I always think that there's still a, uh, a loose air bubble somewhere around the rat rut running around or stagnant. And I'm going to find them and push them down. So. So now we're done here tucking in. What I want to do is go to move to the left. And we're going to say, apply the same techniques on that opposite side, where Aaron's at. This one, you definitely want to use your pick. I like to start from the middle. I left the vinyl. OK. Well, let me see. Maybe we might not need this. Yeah. OK. We might not even need the pick. I lift the vinyl up, release the excess. And then we'll see. Yep, so what we're doing is we're just tucking in. So as you can see, I'm gonna slowly do it. Some people wanna just go ahead and run through it, but again, you're not cutting meat. You're actually tucking it in to get that nice rep uh, presentation. Again, at the, end of your, at the end of your job, it's a presentation. Okay. You just gotta be patient with the vinyl and don't rush it. You rush it, it won't go your way. All right, so I'm got, I got to this corner. I want to lift the excess. Go ahead and inspect where I'm tucking in. So it looks like the surface of the roof goes down rather than out this way and back in underneath. So I'm going to go and pull this back. Lift. And what I want to do is Go ahead and blade this. I don't need to clean it up, but kind of shape it, shape that corner. So I took off a little. In there, tuck underneath. There you have it. And I'll get to this guy here in a sec. Pull, because this is such of a tight corner, this pick here helps me push the weather trim down and I tuck underneath, okay? There it is, nice and clean. Finish it off with this guy here in the corner. Actually, I want to cut, just like the doctor called. Just like that. Boom. Okay. And there you have it. You got your corner. Okay. All right. 
right, just one more. Go. Reinspect it. Always inspect it. Actually, take your time to actually look underneath if any of the vinyl's popping out. And there you have it. Then we'll go through the cleaning process again, like we did in the beginning, with the exception of the uh, the um, clay bar. Now I know in these end shots you see the part that's behind the roof wrap and we actually didn't go over that part, but that part's using the same technique as the roof between tucking the seals and using the squeegee to glass the vinyl. All right guys, thanks for watching Garage Geeks. Today we had the Z06 and how to wrap a roof um, with fresh auto haas. So, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I can wrap my roof better after watching that. I think so, Cody. Yeah, absolutely. I might mess it up and just bring it here. Yeah, here to you guys. Hey, but we're always here for you. If you guys are in San Diego, check them out on Instagram, Fresh Auto Haas. Bring your car here. They do everything from decals to headlight tints to full car wraps. I mean, really, you name it, they could probably find a way to do it. So, again, thanks, Eric, for having me. You're very us. welcome. Thank you, Cody, for having me.